So Chris and myself were on a phone call with a couple of guys from VChain and I thought, hey, it's been a while since I've done a VChain video. Let's jump down into the charts and take a look at what's been going on with the price action of VChain. So in this video, that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend a little bit of time just diving down into the current structures on VET to take a look at what we think is likely to happen next. As I get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, selecting all the notifications, and you will not miss another video update. Above and beyond those two things, though, make sure you are down down in our Discord server, linked in the description down below. It is a fantastic community talking crypto 24-7, um, but it's also the very first place that we go to to notify of everything that is going on in the crypto space. So you can keep a finger on the pulse of crypto by joining us down in the Discord server. Okay, let's, let's just jump right down into this one, right? So it's been a while. Uh, what we'll do is we're going to start off with taking a look at our structures on the daily chart here, okay? We're just going to kind of keep this to a macro level and just kind of see whether or not we can kind of get a little bit more comfortable thinking bullish or whether or not we actually have to kind of wait for another drop and um, before we can get into that kind of bullish environment so following along uh, a lot of the stuff that we've been doing recently we can actually just focus in on this little area down here um okay and we can kind of see that we're in this kind of structure now i do think we still have the ability to drop this down into this kind of final uh, move down here which would be a bigger c wave structure uh, just in here which i think overall would basically make this an abc structure but i do think that actually in reflection of this recent move over the last few days in this direction that we might be able to actually look at this slightly differently so let's go ahead and take a look at this through a different lens let's go ahead and just remove all of those structures let's get rid of them right so let's end up with this move here um and the obvious thing that i want to kind of do is i want to get a good bead on this low here okay and that high so from all time high down into that initial pull to the downside. I want to move this over to the bounce over here, and I want to see where that 1.618 sits. And it sits right down here about 1.236. Okay, so we know that we haven't hit any of those impulsive triggers. This is important because one of the things I'm looking for here is to understand whether or not we have a W, X, Y. I don't know where we put this Y just yet. You kind of possibly could put it here. We'll check that in a second. Uh, I'll leave it there for a second. It could be up here in an X and then down into a Z. Um, and this Y wave could be here and our Z wave could be over here as well. There's a couple of different ways of looking at it. So we're going to do some sense checking on that as well in a second. Okay, for now, we'll leave it there and we'll kind of look at it like this. Okay, um, so why is this important well obviously depending on where we put that y wave will really determine whether or not we have this additional low for v chain or whether or not uh, the bottom is in and all we've got to do is come back down and retest it right um now i personally think that we probably have to come down lower than our original low uh this low from uh, december 2022 right i think we've got to come down lower than that now um that's my personal thoughts following data that sits with bitcoin and the fact that institutional investors really are not getting too involved um and we're not really ready to kind of see that bullish environment yet from a macroeconomic standpoint and with those things being said though but we won't want to just let our bias of that data skew what's going on within the uh, within the wave counts here so let's go ahead and jump into this right and um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out are we three waves here here and here or does that c wave finish over here which would be actually a little bit short so let's go ahead and figure that out and um, so for that we're going to take our fibs and we're going to run this in uh, we're going to pull this down to this level right here and we're going to find a little yellow box and it's going to sit between the 1.618 here and the 1.236 right in here actually no it's not tell a lie i'm on the wrong kind of wave count we're going to go from 1 to 1.236 right there that basically means that our area of expectation would be this one here this falls right inside a typical c wave structure so we'll be able to go and look at this going a b and c that means we have three waves right in here we also have the three waves up this end one two and three just in there and we also have our three wave structure coming up here one two and three up there that basically means we've gone three three and three going to look for three going up and then we're probably going to look for three going down to complete a wxyxz structure um so that means that this is potentially the correct count meaning that we haven't really hit that kind of area where we would expect that c wave to finish uh, over in our lows from june so june was a short of our target range and um, we bounced up and then we fell down into a new lower low that means that we can look at this as a three wave count within that y wave um overall okay and we can actually even make this a little bit clearer by going and taking a look at the sub wave count right inside here 
and we can see that we have the three wave count going on in there as well so ultimately i think that's the right count to be having um, at this particular point in time we'll adjust it if things were to change but for now i think that's the most probable now the move to the upside this is an interesting one because it does get this kind of really nice kind of vibe going to it uh, meaning that this could potentially be a, a really big strong move upwards that does start our trend meaning we just end with y and we're not actually looking at an x or a z because that's the other possibility here so i zoom out of this um and this is more slightly more bullish i guess is we actually just have w x and y okay and that's perfectly fine we could be doing that um so we want to consider that there's no not necessarily a requirement for the x wave but we've got to bear in mind that other data that i said i don't want to kind of steer our analysis could be something that actually makes this an x wave and that z wave coming down later but let's go ahead and scrutinize the wave counts of what's going on on here from our daily standpoint right are we bullish or are we bearish and we have a pretty steep move to the upside here and then we end up with this interesting pattern towards the end ultimately to me this looks more and more likely to be a zigzag pattern as in five three five at that scale we do not seem to have the counts in here to kind of make this look like a five three five three five which would be of course our trend-based structure that would be basically giving us the bear market bottom is in and reversal has occurred kind of scenario we're not really seeing that are we looking at this so this is not a 53535 five, then this has to be something different right it has to be a zigzag pattern which would be just a five wave count followed by a three wave corrective move and then another five wave count um, and i think that's really where this one sits now there's a couple of obvious kind of pullbacks here so we have this one here okay this little reset and then we have this surge upwards we then have a reset here and then we have another surge upwards so it looks like we kind of consolidated down right in this little midsection here and we have nothing here that's kind of giving us that huge indication that we are moving up in a really really big way to me it looks like we probably have ourselves a bit of a sticky situation around this little area in the middle and um, which means we might end up with a corrective structure in here that's mixing in with uh this rather nice impulsive structure that we had initially ultimately to me this looks very corrective because we do not have a clear five wave count um, and not even in a diagonal beginning or a diagonal ending uh, so ultimately i think yeah we are we can park this one up i think as completed a b and potentially c now i put the a wave there it could quite easily and quite comfortably be here as well with our correction being something else also occurring in the middle could also equally just be here and we end up with also this really strange corrective structure in the middle i think for the ease of communicating out the changes here i'm going to drop it like that and then we end up with this c wave here the c wave would be falling short under this particular scenario but as i said i think there's actually some kind of corrective pattern in here that is actually misguiding us a little bit so it's probably more like that nonetheless we can then see that we start to pull back down and we fell down quite a bit um, so here we can see that we fell down 40 percent after moving up pretty sizably okay this isn't an unusual thing we move up 104 112 percent and we drop down 40 and i think we've still got some room to go but nonetheless we do have a nice interesting count over this side so let's go into look at this structure here as i said right if we have done a three wave corrective structure before i get into that if we have done a three wave corrective move here then the expectation is going to be that we come down here in a three wave count right and i'm going to go through that z wave targeting in a moment so let's go ahead and take a look right so over this side here what do we see well we can see that we have an interesting kind of three wave drop right into this movement right here we then go up we then also move down in a three wave structure and i think we've got to come up in a three wave structure and i don't think we're necessarily there just yet so i think there's a little bit more room to the upside potentially here at least on the small time frame all in all this gives me the idea that we might be in a diagonal structure and a pretty typical diagonal at that leading uh, would be the specific terminology we hit the 1.618 down here that tells us that we're not wxy and we're not wxyxz instead where we do ha uh, instead we have to be five ways and we do have the three wave counts internally so that basically tells us we're diagonal um so here we can see one two this being three up here i think four and it's going to be deeper i imagine that we're going to probably push up a little bit more and then we come down into a bigger kind of wave five situation that could potentially truncate i wouldn't expect it to but it could and then we move up and then we move down i think ultimately though uh, this particular structure for our z wave would be 
interesting. Now, if we do have this as a leading diagonal, it would put us into or pull us into question to thinking maybe we're ending in a five wave structure. But the Z wave should be corrective, so we wouldn't expect just randomly to have five waves there. It would have to be zigzag. So if we are leading diagonal here, then that would put into a question a much deeper retracement than maybe we would have hoped. Let's go into figuring out where that Z wave would go. So if we were thinking about this, we would have to obviously measure our W wave. Our W wave is going to determine how low our Z wave goes. So we're going to do is we're going to take our measurement of our W wave, this beginning from all time high, that initial pullback, and I'm going to go ahead and place it on top of our X wave. Okay, so our X wave is just over here. I'm going to zoom in on this, and we're going to move it down over this side. From here, we can see that we're going to start to move down, and our targeted range is going to be fairly broad. It's going to be from our 0 0.618 right here, and it's going to go all the way to the 1.236. Okay, now the Z wave can be so many different structures, it's really hard to get a good bead on it, but it's going to be somewhere in that little box that I've just drawn on. Essentially, this is going to be between, and this is hard to hear, but it's going to be between somewhere 0 0.00405 and 0 0.01147. Okay, these target ranges would mean new lower lows. Okay, so it's going to be one of those. It's going to be interesting. Like I said, we haven't got a good reversal pan that to basically mitigate against having a Z wave. I'm also going to sit here and say that a Z wave is not a guarantee uh, because we could start a new structure that just does take us into those highs. But again, we've got to bear in mind other data that I don't really want to talk about. I think is actually also confirming the same uh, same kind of thing here, right? Essentially, it's bearish, um, and I think the economic climate also indicates bearish. So overall. To me, it looks like the, the structures that are forming here for VeChain on the daily chart are an indication of everything that's going on at a macro scale um, out in the real world, with all the uh, financial banking sector being, you know, a little bit troublesome with interest rate hikes uh, and all that kind of stuff. So ultimately... I'm seeing some corrections here for VeChain. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look at it, right? That's just Elliott Wave Theory. So what if we wanted to kind of trade on this, right, from an Elliott Wave Theory? What would you do? Well, we'd probably be looking to short, but we'd have to short at the right moment, which means we'd have to move up before we'd be moved down, right? And so if we were to complete a diagonal structure here, uh, and we were to think, think of this maybe as a, dia uh, as a much deeper movement, for our um, final Z wave move, then we want to be kind of getting in on a high so that we can short the market to the downside. Alternatively, make sure we have a really nice stop loss. Now, if you are actively trading um, and you'd like trading on VeChain, for example, then why not check out BitGet linked in the description down below. We've got some fantastic offers available through our affiliate link in the description, such as the cashback offer that's running at the moment where you deposit 50 USDT and you can get $10 USDT cashback. And um, we also have some fantastic rewards all the way up to $8,000 depending on your deposit bonuses and various other tasks that you can complete inside of BitGet. Now we go above and beyond that if you are going to sign up to BitGet and you are an active trader then you can also take part in the competitions that we have every single week in our Discord server where we have a prize pool of 100 USDT for the best ROI percentage at the end of every week. This is just launched we've got three more days of this weekly competition and it gets reset and a new competition will start on Monday. This is a reoccurring competition every single week so the best roi percentage gains for the week will earn that reward this is a new thing so we'll scale it accordingly we'll add more prizes we'll add an uh, increased prize pool and all that kind of stuff as time progresses if this is a successful thing that people want to see so let me know in the comments down below if you're signed up to bitget and you're taking part or you're thinking about taking part join us in the discord server and there's a lot more details to be found down there um so coming back into our charts and thinking about this that's kind of one thing that we can be thinking right we could be thinking okay we can properly potentially potentially profit from this move to the downside by shorting the market if that's what you wanted to do. Okay, so let's jump down into smart money concepts on VeChain. What does this tell us? Are we bullish or are we bearish? So as we kind of think about this, if I just zoom out, let's just take a look at the bigger macro piece. First off the bat, we have this change of characterization at the top here. This is basically going from a bullish state to a bearish state. We can then see that we've got these BOSs right over here. These are basically what we'd call a CTS, a continuation of the trend to the downside. So ultimately, we're still in a bearish state at this macro level. There is one thing that's really obvious here is that this change 
range of character that was up here has not formed in a bullish way over here. We are still in a bearish state because we haven't actually changed the characteristics from bearish to bullish on the smart money concepts at this daily level. Okay, so we know that we're still trending to the downside. We can also compound this by taking a look at the recent movements here and taking a look at these two lines. The yellow line is our 50 EMA and the white line is our 200 EMA. And we can see that we are firmly below both of those. We have pushed above them briefly, um, but ultimately here things are not looking great. So we find ourselves getting rejected. Now we can also see that we're getting rejected right now on the equilibrium. The equilibrium is a 50% area between our discount and our premium ranges. At the moment, we have a weak low and a strong high. This basically tells us that it's unlikely that we're going to push higher than the strong area uh, where the premium range is. And all of this resistance right up here and all of these um, sell order blocks are basically going to make sure the price goes down. And like I said, with Elliott Wave Theory, it looks like new lower lows. It would confirm the idea of new lower lows. Not only are we still in that bearish market structure, uh, we also have a weak low and a discounted area down here with very little buying appearing on the charts. There's no internal order blocks down here that are basically saying there's a lot of buying pressure to occur. We also have an absence on this daily chart of any fair value gaps as well. So we know that there's not really in any kind of obvious areas that we're going to be retracing down to. So my expectations are, unfortunately, that we're probably in that Z wave from Elliott Wave Theory. And Smart Money Concepts here is basically confirming that with us as well as we continue to be in this bearish state with no major break to the upside or change of characteristics, at least not net, not yet. We do obviously have that strong high. If we were to pierce up above it, that would change our character to bullish. So let's always hope that maybe you do that and maybe we finally get that signal to be more bullish. But it doesn't look like we're there yet. To me, it looks like we're fully corrective up um, with Elliott Wave Theory, and it looks like we've got to come down quite a bit before we actually finish this thing off overall. Heading up into overball, just like with BTC, my expectations are that we do come down into those low ranges. And as I said before, there's some fantastic opportunities in shorting that market if you really wanted to. Now, to make this a little bit easier, if you do not understand Elliott Wave Theory, although I have put a course together at cheekyschool.com, linked in the description down below, if you're just going to look at support and resistance lines, we can take an obvious one here and say, look, the market it was obviously going to reject from equilibrium when those uh, EMAs were also coinciding with this area. So this would have been a fantastic short opportunity if we wanted to. We could have gone short probably as we entered up into equilibrium here, put a real tight stop loss just above that area of the 50 EMA, and we could have probably taken a good risk reward ratio. I probably would have gone for a 3.0. I like a 3.0 myself. And um, so somewhere around here, and you can see that we would have done that within a single day, we would have been able to kind of capture that profit. Uh, right there so if we're going to short the market that's kind of what we do and as i said do sign up to bitget join us in the weekly competitions if that's the kind of thing that you want to be doing um, but ultimately here from a smart money concepts point of view i think it pretty much has confirmed everything that elliott way theory is also telling us and that the market is actually going to be moving down it's just going to have to be a little bit patient i don't think it will happen overnight but generally the direction is going to be to the downside just on the macro level i don't think there's anything else really to know other than some key levels of interest to us uh, so 1.4 cent 1 0.1 cent uh, and it's that area right down here this one is where really i think the z wave has a minimum expectation to go to so 1.1 cent um, and of course all the way down into these lower ranges down here at 0.006 as well so from a macro standpoint support and resistance lines everything there is also kind of conforming with what i think is going to happen from a fibonacci level and an elliott wave theory wave count along with smart money concepts also confirming that we're in a bearish state right now so ultimately i think there's a little bit further to the downside to go for v chain um, but i think that comes with fantastic opportunities to load up before we get into that next bullish market guys i'm gonna wrap this video up right there if you found it useful and informative smash that like button i do appreciate that if you're new to the channel go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all the notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at cheeky crypto don't forget to join us in discord guys check it out i don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there until the next one have a fantastic day